everybody. Welcome to Dulce America. My name is Bing Futch. Thank you very much for joining me. This month we're looking at playing with a looper pedal. Yeah, we're playing with it basically. We're learning from it. We're practicing, we're rehearsing, we're performing with it, but largely we are just kind of playing with it. And that's what happens. You go down the rabbit hole and you have a lot of fun. This is an advanced level episode. And specifically, I'm going to show you how I created my arrangement for Promontory from the motion picture The Last of the Mohicans, starring Daniel Day-Lewis. This was a piece of music called The Gale, written by Doogie McLean of Scotland, and film composer Trevor Jones reached out to Doogie and said, we'd like to use The Gale as part of the soundtrack for this motion picture. And so it worked out really well, and it is one of the most famous pieces of music out there. People are so strongly affected by this. Now, I caution people when, about this. This is not all of Promontory, and those of you who are in love with the soundtrack know that there's another part of this tune that breaks out and goes in a different direction. But the gale, the heartbeat of Promontory, is what I'm focused on here. So there is the Trevor Jones theme, but largely it is just a very repeatable series of chords. We mentioned last week that the ideal looping tune is going to have a repeatable chord progression that you can go over and over again. doesn't take you long to build it, but you can definitely build on top of those chord progressions, very, very simple as they are, and make something more complex by what you apply over the top of it, and that's what makes this piece stand out. I also took some, uh, <laughs> some liberties and added some things that have nothing really to do with the piece, but it's just something to, again, make it more dynamic so it's not just the gale over and over again. There are a number of different components and I'm going to give that all to you uh, through a download on Patreon. So go ahead to this address down below and download the Gale package. That's going to include all the different parts used to create this performance. And once again, I've got Tim, my new Fullcraft Instruments double mountain dulcimer that has a full bass side over here. And then a standard side here. Now my pedal board down below, you can see I've got my looper pedal and I've also got uh, another drum machine over here. There's a drum machine built into the looper pedal. I've got my digital delay, a freeze pedal for creating drums to play over, freezing chords. I've got a distortion pedal, my octave pedal, which is largely what I use for looping. And I have a vocal harmonizer and then a seven band EQ to make everything sound as nice as possible, depending on where I'm playing. So I'm playing through a Black Star guitar amp, does not have a lot of bass response. So you're not going to hear this really well, but I can use my bass string and then this octave pedal to get a bass sound. <laughs> craft make this actual bass for me because it gets the job done and it sounds a lot better and doesn't warble on you like some of these uh, pedals do. So to start off with we want to create the bass line. We want to lay down the bass for the chords we're playing and then we can add the chords ourselves. So the first thing we're going to do is have our D and we are in the key of D minor for the promontory. Going to go to G next, then down to F, E, and then back to D. And I think I got that right. Yes, I do. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find myself a nice little 6 8 patch to be the drums in the background. So I'm going to clear out whatever I had in the uh, looper before, and then I'm going to select patch number six, and that's going to give me a six eight kind of a drum thing going on here. Then I set it off here, all right. that immediately after I lay down the bass, I need 
to start laying in chords right away. So let me do something real quick here. Now let me stop it. Okay. We talked last episode about options when you're creating your loops. One of those options is when you set your loop that the record function will switch off and allow you to simply play over the loop you've created. But if you're building your supporting chords in pieces like I do with the mountain dulcimer, then you don't want to have it go to play when you set your loop. You want to actually keep recording so you can keep adding bits and pieces and then assemble, construct your supporting uh, chords uh, as quickly as possible, and then be able to solo over the top. This takes a lot of practice and it takes a lot of coordination because sometimes I'm hitting things with my foot at the same time that I'm activating over here. Sometimes I've got both feet doing things. Today, normally what I would do, I would set the loop, and as I set the loop, I'd be turning off my bass pedal and then playing normally. This time I'm not going to be doing that with the bass pedal because I'm going to actually switch from one side of the fretboard to the other. Okay, I'm going to lay in the bass first and then chords. things I do is I have the drum track going it's already set in the background and it'll give me as many measures of that drum track as I need once I set the loop I'm laying my bass in when I'm done with my bass I set the loop and immediately begin playing the chords which are D minor C major I play a G bass on that F back to C major and then back to D minor And then typically right after that second time through the loop, which is not a very long loop at all, I start playing the melody. But I want to stop and show you that's what was going on there. Now, when I hit the left button or pedal, this is going to start up with my bass, with my chords, and I can begin playing the solo. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> that again so now here's again when you're painting these pictures with the looper pedal but you've got this very very small foundation on which to build you can always go back down to that in terms of dynamics but you can really really build up and make it bigger so here I'm sort of bringing back things down again which is why I didn't want to lay too much activity into the initial loop just that very very simple bass part to kick through everything and just uh, basic kisses of chords, nothing arpeggiated, nothing really fancy, because I can always layer on top of what I've created. But when I come down to the bare minimum, I want it to be so that the, the piece breathes. 
it gets really big and then it comes back down and then it gets really big. And of course, towards the end, if you've seen me perform this, it gets huge because I'm recording every single little bit and adding it so that, so that it, it continues to dynamically grow. The thing with that is that you have to be careful because you can put too much in and then it muddies everything. So even though it sounds like I'm throwing everything at it, uh, over the years I've found what parts work, what frequencies are too much, and to be very, very careful about that last kick of bass I tend to throw in at the very end because it can end up clipping your levels and making everything sound like caca. So I'm going to start up. What I'm doing now is I'm doing this part, I'm doing it up high, and then I'm doing a little bit of what turned, it, it, it was an improv at one point, just something that's a little different to break away from what we've got. And then when I'm finished doing that, I'm going to come back in, and you'll notice I will turn the recording back on when I come back to the gale, the big theme. And I tend to play that four times, and I'm recording it each time. This is the beginning of the end. This is as we are going. And I want to go from a whisper to a scream. So if you think about this being where we're at, it's going to continue to grow and grow and grow all the way until we get to the end of the piece. That starts with me, or yeah, the beginning of the end starts with me recording the gale piece four times through. It's really important to try and nail that as much as possible because if you nail those notes timing-wise, it makes it fatter, and then it will be heard above everything else I'm adding. Uh, also, it just sounds cleaner. Sometimes I can do it, and sometimes I'm like, Ugh. especially if I start this too quickly, and there's a danger in that. Better to err on the side of slower than faster, because once you've set that loop speed, you will, you will either have to bail out and look silly, or you'll have to go with it and maybe look sillier because you crashed and burned. I haven't really crashed and burned with this piece, but man, I have come really close. <laughs> okay, we're going to start up again. I'm going to carry from the top now. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. Watch how we build this from a whisper to a scream. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
everything. And then play it out. Promontory from the last of the Mohicans. Um, typically I'm using a bass pedal, but now since I've got this awesome bass side on uh, my dulcimer, uh, I'll be using that a lot more often because it sounds more natural. And sometimes the uh, octave pedal, which is the Boss OC5 pedal, even though it's polyphonic, meaning you can play one more than one note at a time, it tracks a little weird depending on your pickup and input, and it can warble and sound not real. And the idea here, of course, is to make it sound really real and acoustic as possible. That is a great, great, fun piece of music. I love playing it. It's challenging, and it really evokes quite a lot of uh, ideas and memories and visuals for people wherever I play it. So now you've got the music, and now you've got the secrets to how I loop it all together. Go out there and uh, have some fun with it. It really is something, and I just I never get tired of playing it. Never get tired of people asking for it. So I hope this has been helpful this whole month, looking at playing with the looper pedal, having fun with it, using it to practice, rehearse, using it to write, using it to even uh, perform out in public. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a little tap dancing, and it's even more difficult when I really can't see what I'm doing. Normally I don't play on the stand, and I can see what's going on down there. Normally the dulcimer's on my body, and it's a lot easier. So right now it's kind of awkward. But uh, this is an art form. And I don't do it all the time, but I do use it enough to uh, lend some support to the music that I'm playing and make it a little bit bigger than just the dulcimer itself. If you have any questions about looping or about adding to your pedal board, you can always send me an email to bingfutch at yahoo.com and I'll be happy to help you out. Next week will be an all skill levels episode featuring the looper pedal. And I think I'm going to share with you a brand new looping arrangement that I've just put together. And uh, we'll see what you think about it. Until then, everybody, have fun, and we will see you next week.